<laughs> Thanks, Brian. Well, the U.S. now failing to crack the glo global 20 in education. Are students lagging behind most developing countries in reading, science, and math? And college students rarely able to attend college without being burdened with six-figure debts. But our next guest says he has the solution, and it's technology. Joining us now is University of Tennessee professor of law, Glenn Reynolds, and the author of The New School, How the Information Age Will Save America, American Education from Itself. Welcome and good morning. Nice to see you. So obviously, you know, I think we all look at the issues with education in this country and the numbers at times aren't good. What is the main problem in your mind? Uh, it's costing way too much and it's delivering way too little. I mean, that's uh, from kindergarten to graduate school, uh, we're spending a fortune and the results we're getting are actually getting worse, if anything. So what's the solution? Uh, well, you know, our, both our higher education and our K-12 models were basically imported from Germany in the 19th century, and we've pretty much followed them ever since. Uh, it's the 21st century, and it's time to look for something different, uh, more of a sort of customizable approach where your education has more to do with what you're good at and how you learn, rather than trying to hammer square pegs into round holes. So you say technology is a key to that. It will be the instrument in making that customized education. How so? Right, well, it's not just giving every kid an iPad, because iPads are cool, but uh, it, it, it's more about how you use the technology. And, uh, for example, we have these flipped classroom models where the boring lecture part that usually would be done by the teacher in the classroom is instead watched on videos by the students at home, and then the homework and the problems are actually done in the classroom with the teachers there to help and explain things, and the teacher does a better job usually than the parents, that kind of thing. Okay, so what you're saying, I mean, and the, the rankings aren't good. You know, when I, when I allude to the numbers, I think we're 29th in math, 22nd in science, as you see here now, 20th in reading. Uh, well, it, that stands to be improved. Uh, yeah, it, it's not hard. To, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit, I think. But when you say uh, the cost of education, when you talk about college education, I mean, the debt that follows, and now without the hope of a job, and the reality of a job waiting for you on the other end, I mean, many are considering whether to attend or not. Um, I, I'm wondering, though, if the, if the kids are left at home with technology, um, that's assuming that there's a parent there. That's assuming that they get out of school at 2.30 or 3 or 4 and someone's there to actually coach them through and monitor them in terms of safety. What, it, there has to be an approach to really the whole of the student, correct? Not just well, take them home with the tech and let them learn math. Oh, that's that right. And, and I'm not saying there's like one magic solution where every kid gets an iPad and does online classes. I think actually what we're going to see is not one big solution, but a lot of different smaller solutions that are different for different families and different kids and different needs. I mean, we live in an era where you have 900 kinds of shampoo. Why should we have one kind of education? That's interesting. And I mean, look, kids are interested in tech. Are you, is, does a lot of this have to do with interest and in keeping their attention? Are they more apt to read and do math on a bit of technology than on paper now? Well, if you look at the industry that's best at holding kids' attention and getting them to learn a lot of arcane facts and master them, it's the video game industry, right? Not a bad point there, Glenn. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Enjoy our conversation here.